And it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and delivered himself or gave himself for me. Amen? That's the same thing he's saying in Colossians. Then in verse 4, when Christ, who is your life, our life, you can put your name there, he's your life. Our, all-inclusive. I don't like to think about it that way. I like to think about it individually. Individuals that make up the church. He is your life. When he's revealed, then you will also be revealed with him in glory. That means wherever he's going to be one of these days in glory, you're going to be there with him. In fact, in, in concept is if he's sitting at the right hand of God, in one sense you're already sitting there with him. That's a mind-blowing thought, is it not? You're here. You got bills to pay. You still sneeze. You get cold. <laughs> allergies. Allergies are, are relevant here on earth, right? You got all the trials and temptations. You still got to get up in the morning and go to work unless it's spring break, I guess, uh, for the kids at least, right? We still have the pains and sufferings and trials but in reality, we're as good as dead, and we're there with him. I heard this last week, a sermon. I was listening to a sermon, and a guy said, uh, he said, all men, may, all men must die, but not all men live. Think about it. All men die, this old body came from dust. That's what it's going back to. But not all men live. But if Christ is your life, if you consider yourself as good as crucified, as good as dead, let him become your life, you're really alive in a way you've never thought about being alive, spiritually, with him. Therefore, he says in verse 5, consider the members of your earthly body as dead too. And he goes on and gives a list. I want us to think this morning about two, a couple of things. What does it mean that Christ is my life and how does that Happen? How do I look at it? How, what do I have to do here and here to make that a reality? Okay? First and foremost, first and foremost, reckon yourself dead. Reckon yourself dead. My wife was reminding me this last week, and about this same time every year in Bolivia, where we used to serve as missionaries, they have the Day of the Dead, they call it. And in that superstitious, animistic society, they go out to the graveyard, some of them, not all of them, and they dig up the bones of some of their ancestors. This really happens. You can read about it. Go to the Internet. It'll, it'll tell you about it. It's not fiction. It happens. They bring them to the house. They set them down in a chair, and they sit down and have a meal with them. Really? That happens. That's strange, isn't it? <laughs> Reckon yourself dead and that it's Christ that's currently living in your body. That's what he's talking about here. What does that mean? It means uh, to count myself dead, to consider myself dead, to suppose myself dead, to think about it as if I were really dead. The old Kent has been nailed to a cross. Think about it that way in your mind. 
The best picture I could think of in, in coming up with this idea and trying to illustrate this point is the word, comes from the word metamorphosis. You know what that means? I mean, this, we're going to have biology class right here at church this morning, okay? Uh, Webster defines it this way. Webster says it's a change in physical form, structure, or substance, especially by supernatural means. Well, we're talking about something that we've been reading about that's very supernatural, right? If it's of God, it's supernatural. That means I can't do it. Only done through Him. And the only way I can reckon myself dead is through the power of His Holy Spirit living inside me. I can't do it by myself, nor can you. You need God's Spirit who lives inside you in order to accomplish that truth in your life. Here's an example. A cocoon that some worm makes, right? And that cocoon doesn't look like anything I'd want to have around the house. But the reality is if we wait long enough from that weird dead looking cocoon comes a beautiful butterfly. That's the kind of change that I believe God is talking about in this passage of Scripture. Now, I love butterflies, especially these western scissor tail, what do they call them? Monarch or whatever they are. What do they call them? Yeah, beautiful butterflies. I look forward to in fact, in our backyard, if the winter doesn't kill them every year, you know, we got some butterfly bushes and they attract, they're attracted to those flowers and they come and live around those. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. See, that kind of beauty is what a life that's dead to self and alive to Jesus looks like. It looks like that to other people around about you, people you work with, people in your family, people you go to church with. People you meet on the streets. It's that kind of beauty. Romans 12, 2, the same author, of course, the Holy Spirit is the author of the whole Bible, so it doesn't really matter. Same author, same person, Paul, who penned it, okay, or who gave it originally. He says, be transformed in verse 2, 12, 2. A part of what he says there is to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Folks, that's what happened during, during metamorphosis. Something comes out of that cocoon that doesn't look like the cocoon. It's that beautiful butterfly. That's the kind of transformation that Paul talks about in spiritual terms. He says it happens by the renewing of our mind. 12.2, Romans 12.2. That means in my mind and in your mind, we need to reckon ourselves as dead. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> reckon ourselves as dead. You can control your mind. You know, a part of the Spirit of God living inside each of us is defined in Galatians 5, 22 and 23, the fruit of the Spirit, self-control. Now that means I can control myself from doing some bad things but it also means I can control my mind in doing good things, does it not? They're both sides of that coin. And a part of self-control in the life of the believer is that we can exercise that control considering and reckoning ourselves and thinking of ourselves as dead. And he's alive in us. 